to start off with, do you mind telling me who you are and what you do? Yeah, so my name is uh, Dusan Stojanovic. Uh, I'm the founder of True Global Ventures. Uh, we are a super angel fund, about uh, 30 former entrepreneurs who've been really done exits within either internet, mobiles or software. And we are basically based in eight different cities, which are Beijing, Shanghai, Hong Kong, Stockholm, Berlin, Paris, New York, and San Francisco. As a group, we've done 350 uh, investments on an individual basis, and we have started to invest together. So with True Global Ventures 1, uh, we realized uh, six investments, um, one in China, three in Europe, and two in the US. And we just kicked off True Global Ventures 2, uh, where actually our first investment is in Berlin. And it's quite a different investment vehicle. Uh, how did it come about that you kind of joined together with all these angels to invest? Yeah, we kind of wanted to prove that a, um, former entrepreneurs turned angel investors can actually make a difference also on a global scale and not only on a local scale. Our traditional role has always been to be before VCs on a local level. Uh, so what, what we said, if we have actually done 350 investments, we should be able to help the companies also to internationalize and not just to put some kind of love money in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So ho our whole objective is to actually support the company in the city where it's based and also expand to the other seven cities where we are and where we have done investments in order to do introduction in terms of sales, partnership and so on. But you were saying before that you only invest in companies in these eight cities. Why is that? that after a while it became very clear that in these eight cities there are enough exits that have been done from entrepreneurs in the tech space which who are uh, people who are thinking about their next thing so in these eight cities together we have enough of deal flow actually from serial entrepreneurs who want to reinvest their money and we invest at the same time with their new venture mm -hmm. so it's really kind of a question of matching our what we propose to the entrepreneur and that there is enough of actually entrepreneurs who have the qualification or who have actually done an exit in these eight cities. So that's why we took these eight cities. And your first investment in Berlin was to striking. Yeah. And so that's a free um, to play online and mobile game startup. Um, why did you choose that? Well, first the team. Uh, we, we really like both Dirk and, and Wolf um, who, are, who, are, who are really, I think, trying to do something extremely unique. So the team we really liked, and if there is anyone who is gonna solve the kind of gaming and consumer brand problem and how game developers will actually manage to uh, monetize from consumer brands, I think it will be Dirk and Wolf because they actually have the perfect background from them. But the second thing is what that is actually a unique concept. We, we, you know, I was here like uh, 18 months ago and I saw Team Europe and Rocket Internet and I, I, I found main, the main ideas were that had worked for copycats, although I saw some new ideas as well. And I think that's what I'm seeing a little bit more in Berlin now with really truly unique concepts that where there is, where there are entrepreneurs confident enough saying, I want to bring a whole you know, new global concept as opposed to just in, get inspired by a Silicon Valley a startup. Right, and you're based in Stockholm and there are a lot of great startups coming out of Sweden. What do you think it is about Sweden that produces such great companies? I think many times I try to explain it is if something has been extremely successful, a lot of people are being inspired by it. So if you have tennis, we had a Borg. If we had skiing, we had Stanmark. When it comes to IT, we obviously had Skype uh, as an example. And, and such, you know, when you have such a huge success in, in a country, a lot of people getting inspired, uh, even if it's a small country. So a lot of people, and obviously there are a lot of good engineers. So the kind of entrepreneurial scene is strong there uh, traditionally there have always been a very strong entrepreneurship in the in the whole country and now also in the tech area so I, I think these three elements are basically really helpful i don't think the state has helped that much actually mm -hmm. i think these things have actually worked out pretty well without the state getting too much into kind of participating and supporting okay and what startup do you think is the most promising up and coming startup in Sweden at the moment. You know, the payments area is something that Sweden is very, very strong in. 
based on a little bit what I explained uh, before. So I, I do believe that Klarna will be a huge success, um, even globally, uh, because it has a very, very strong uh, concept. Um, I, I do believe that some of the companies in terms of where you get the Martem, the, Clar uh, the Martems, the Linux Smart Casa, which is basically that you get the exact groceries that you need for your preparing your meal at home uh, is being copycatted already in Germany and in the US. But I believe the original companies like the Midax, Linux Smart Casa, and Martem, the three main ones that were actually started already you know, five, six years ago, I think they will take a big market share also elsewhere. Great. Well, thanks for talking to me, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your short stay in Berlin. Okay. Thank you very much.